So we're going to go over the two best Ramfire builds that I think are available at the moment and then I'm going to talk about how you can add Ramfire into any of your builds and this way you may not need to build a strictly Ramfire build to counter the teams that you want to counter. We'll also talk about how to counter Ramfire along the way as well. This one's a bit of a classic. This has been around since the start of the game. I'm not sure who came up with it but it's been played a lot throughout each of the patches and it's still probably relevant at the moment and it's definitely one to be aware of for future patches as well. This will be there's always like a good way to build a round fire team and I'll, I'll run through it as we go but essentially it's going to be fire rogue fighter so fighter increases everyone's attack speed fire is just flat damage boost to everyone as always it's a little bit more on the actual alluvials with that affinity or class and we're also going to have air as well, so this will just nerf their starting energy. Round 1, we're just playing our 3 fighters. Um, I don't usually play this build, so there is probably a op more optimal way to set all this up. You pr I probably did want them all grouped up here, so they're targeting one alluvial down early. Um, but then round 2, we are going to set up our rogues. So we'll go Ramfi. This is the first version of Ramfire, so this eventually evolves into Ramfire. And that'll give us another fire rogue. We'll just go the lesser Volante. That's another fire rogue. This Volante, this air Volante will complete the, the air fire rogue fighter starter. So very solid round two. So against a lot of builds, you'll end up winning. You could end up winning like a lot of the time in four rounds. So you win. You've got a really good, like a strong round one and two. And obviously round three and four, we're going to have the ramp fire down, which is also super strong. So if you want to build where you could potentially just win games in four rounds, this is definitely the, the one you'd want. So the good thing about this opener as well is we can kind of see their positioning. Now I don't actually know if I win this matchup. Like I said, I don't play this round five build much and the Tsunami build is quite good. So we'll see how this goes, but it, this may not counter the build he's playing. And if you're interested in the build he's playing, uh, it, my last video actually showcased it. So go back one video and you can see how to play his build. So round three gonna play the ramp fire now and I know he can move his ranger for free so I'm never gonna be able to pick one side that he's gonna be on so I'm gonna place it kind of in the middle I don't want it on the Kukaras early but we're gonna bond our ranger to the ramp fire usually put your ranger maybe in a corner because your ranger is gonna be important in this in this team build he's gonna have the inferno phantom just like your ramp fire the phantoms what allows them to jump to the back line they gain crit chance and their Omega ability can now crit. And they get a bit of Omega power on crit as well. Inferno is also really good. So this, every time, well, when they first Omega, you can see all the fire around the board. The fire around the board is doing uh, energy damage to everyone on the board constantly. And that'll be until the, the Alluvial or the Ranger dies. So there is a way you can build this where you put crit on your round fire. Because his Omega is critting. But it's only at 25%. Of 15% chance plus the 10% from rogues. So it's at 25% chance now. If we add this on, we can get it to 50% crit chance. However, there's some other augments you're going to not be able to place if you do that. So keep that in mind. You can go a crit build and try one shot everything, which is super fun. But I'll show you what the standard augments we play on the round fire is. So we got an extra 10% crit from playing that fourth rogue. But I'm going to play Indomitable on the round fire. Yeah, so ideally I would have put the suppressor down there because I know they're wanting to cast a lot. So I'll probably lose this round. I've got 50 mastery points in the bank. Too busy explaining things. But we want, we definitely want survival protocol on the round fire because quite often the opponent's plan would be just to kill the round fire before he even casts. And you can see there he would have died in that Omega if he didn't have survival protocol. We'll be able to see the difference with me getting these suppressors down. I'm going to get all of these suppressors down. It's going to nerf their energy which they're heavily relying on because every time Ranger casts everyone gets a shield via Enchanter. So it's quite quite strong at the moment. So your two options, well there's probably three options. I said the, the crit round fire which I don't recommend but it can be fun. Or you could play double energy. So you place both these down and they give starting energy. So he'll cast extremely fast. In that case you don't need the Indomitable because you're casting so quickly. The other popular one is this Exalted Vitality Veil. So this, once he hits 50% 50, 50 health, it triggers a lot of energy regen for the 5 seconds and a bit of health regen as well. So, so this is what the opponent will generally do as well. He's put the Leecher down which is going to sap my energy every time the Accident casts. 
And this will... So he's trying to stop my round 5 from casting. I'll still probably get the cast off, but it may be too late or not have the impact that it usually would. But if we look at the damage, you can see my rangers doing quite good damage. I'll link both these round 5 builds in the description below, so you can click on that and import the team and start using them. If you appreciate that and the video, make sure to like and subscribe, and feel free to ask me anything in the comments as well. So we lose that one, but we can see how strong, how much stronger we were once we got the suppressors down. The armor on my ranger, I'm going to get down more starting energy for everyone. And what I'm going to do is put less energy here. Hopefully his ranger doesn't move. So I'll move my round for here. Probably the better move, maybe not putting this down and moving my ramp fire over here so his omega clips the ranger but often he'll predict that and maybe he'll put his ranger over this side he knows he only has to win one round so maybe he'll we'll see what he does but this is going to be the standard build and as you get more proficient in this maybe you have better ways to play this so he's nerfing my energy again so this is a good example of how you counter ramp fire you either get so tanky that you can just outlive the omega and you know, via like a Mystic or Enchanter, or, you know, he's got five Bulwarks, so that counters it as well. Um, or you nerf his energy so much that he's barely getting a cast off. So I only just got my cast off then, but I'd killed everything anyway. And you could see how good the Ranger was. So this is what I mean by don't underestimate the Ranger. See what he does now, he's probably going to want to switch. So I'm going to give myself starting energy here, starting energy here, so my Ramphy casts quite quickly. And what I'm going to do... I'll put the less energy over here in case he swaps to this corner. Let's get an indomitable down on my rogue here. And I may as well put that augment down as well. He's decided just to put more augments down. So he may not have realized that this here is sapping his ranger's energy. Yeah, see, he just stopped to cast there. It's quite strong. But yeah, it's still a hard matchup. I don't know if I'd win this all the time. But it looks like we've got a solid chance here. My range is still healthy, and his range is shooting across to my ramp fire, who's still got uh, the indomitable left, which just got triggered. Uh, fortunately, my range, uh, yeah, should win this. All right, this is the second ramp fire build, and this is potentially a better build than the one I just showed you. But it's at least more popular and a bit more versatile. Um, I'll run through it as we go, but we're up against Super Grocco, who playing pretty much the same build as the last guy I versed. So we, hopefully he can showcase um, how to counter round fire. So round one, I'm not sure what the best opener for this is. We could go the Earth Rogues, just kind of playing one here and here. Um, or we could have, what we did, we got the three Bulwark. We end up getting Berserker Riplants with the Greater Monkey. So we get Berserker and Toxic. We've got a bit more versatility with other options to do to kind of carry, to get through the front line, or we could leave them back here to, you know, take out anything that's jumping. Obviously, we got less damage than the last build I showed, but more tankiness and more carry options, potentially. But we'll see. Definitely against some certain builds, the team, the round five build I showed before might be a lot better. So round two, I'm going to get my rifle lance down. I kind of want him being more on this side, potentially, so he wraps around. And then my monkey, I'll just place him there, I think. What Super Groco is doing, which I think is like a really good way to counter round fire and maybe counterintuitive is he's stacking up to one side so you might think it makes sense to spread against round fire and in some cases that might be better but often the way i like to counter round fire is put myself in a supportive bubble um, because not only do you, when you're in a bubble like this you focus things down a lot better you also have a lot more cc options that are unavoidable if that makes sense. It'll make more sense as we go into the later rounds, but he will eventually have his Grocco here, his Taunt from his Mini Bull, and his Kukulus will also be able to stun, and all of those will be a bit harder to avoid when I'm placing my round fire like in the middle of them to do a lot of damage. Yeah, so he's got the stun here, the Taunt, and a stun lock here as well, and most of the Ranger Gauntlet Omegas will probably be shooting into my round fire. And he gets quite tanky with five bulwarks anyway and the shield, so he'll probably be able to tank any round fire and mega that eventually gets through. So that's just one option to consider. Like I said, sometimes it is better to spread out, but consider putting yourself in a ball like this. He's also really well protected with the flight here. The so round three, we may as well put our round fire down. Unfortunately, I don't have the bulwark or earth anymore. And my round fire is still probably going to die. So maybe I shouldn't have done this this round. Maybe I should have waited and just gone more into Earth Bulwark, and I probably would have killed more on this front line at least. 
So I probably have lost way more HP than I should have this round. So that's kind of how you learn. You play these matchups a lot, and now I know round 3 is probably not the time to play Ramfire until I can actually get Augments down on him. So I'm going to put my Grilla right here. Hopefully he can get his Omega off, which does a taunt, and that could potentially interrupt the Ranger. So I've got my 3 Bulwark, 5 Earth. I'd rather be healthier, like I probably should have had a better round 3. And we'll see if I can even survive this round. I think with Survival Protocol, it might not be the best move just yet. I might actually be, have better luck with this, getting my Omega off. Maybe Survival Pro Protocol would have been better, but I think I possibly just need to get the Omega off faster. Yeah, my, maybe my Ranger needs to be... Once I get Indomitable on my round file, I'll put my Ranger over here. And his Ranger will be shooting over to my Ranger, but my Indomitable should be able to tank it. I might just die this round. Yeah. Either way, I hope that showcased that build. It didn't look very good then, but it is a popular build. So definitely consider that if you're wanting to build a Ramfire build. Personally, I like the first one I showed you with the fire and extra rogues. It's just more fun. Uh, I don't know if it's better, but they're the two options you would want to consider. And it was good for Super Grocco there showcasing how to play against Ramfire. Stacking yourself up like that can often be better than spreading out. If you're not confident you can kill that Ramfire though quickly or CC him, and you have other carries like a Scoriox or something like that you need to protect, you will have to kind of spread out and play um, away from the Ramfire. But, and I'm sure he would have eventually played down energy reduction as well. So he would have nerfed my energy there and my Ramfire probably wouldn't have even cast. So this is an example of how just bringing Ramfire in your build, in any build, can help counter some of those teams that you may not be able to beat otherwise. So right now I'm coming up against a Scion build, which Ramfire Inferno is notoriously good against. And I'm using my Mud Mystic build, which usually doesn't have a Ramfire in it. And it doesn't really fit that well, but I'll show you how I've, how I've put it in. And I was too slow there, I should have got some more down, but I really don't win this round anyway at all, so... And I usually don't kill anything. The Toxic Colossus is just too strong. So I pretty much only use a Ramfire against this Scion build, and sometimes Invokers as well. But I am going to put down my Ramfire this round. Attach him to my Ranger. Give my Ranger the Gauntlet, and this always gives you Phantom Inferno. You really only need the Inferno. Let's just put down the Indomitable on my Grilla. Inferno is what you really want in this build, because Inferno does 65 damage per second once they hit Omega. So both your Ranger and your Ramfire Omega will start doing that. The reason I say that is because some builds, I think it's my Enchanter, Enchanter Mystic build, I've just brought the Fire Staff, so I've able to use the Staff of my Ranger, pair him to the Ramfire, and that'll give him Inferno, but not in Phantom. It gives me Enchanter instead, so there's other ways you can add Ramfire in. If you are going to add it in for this purpose, you only really need Inferno. So now I'm just going to add my Bulwarks. In fact, I do need Indomitable down here. Indomitable is really good on Ramp Fire, just to allow you to actually get that first Omega off. You notice last round he just died instantly. So you need, oh, against this build, you definitely need Survival Protocol. So it'll help him get his Omega off, and even if it doesn't, there'll be an extra 6 seconds of auto-attacking. And I really just need to not die in 4 rounds here, so... The goal here is not necessarily win these rounds, but just do that and take out as many of the flishes as I can. I'm probably not going to get through these, the Toxic Colossus, but it'll save save me health. Then we can win in the later rounds. There's, there's still a lot I need to get down. I need to we'll get my Bulwarks down because three Bulwarks is always good. I probably should have had my Ranger over here just for that initial Inferno Phantom damage as he lands. And... I want my guys are down because I do want everyone shooting over here instead of across the board and nailing kind of all my backline alluvials at the same time. I haven't refined this starter like the way I build into this team round by round yet, so maybe this isn't the best way to play it. Maybe I've put down too many of these survival protocol augments and this is this means that I haven't been able to get as many alluvials down by round four as I usually would. But as I said before, I found I, I mostly just need to survive to round 5 or 6. And the best way i found to do that is to just almost purely rely on my griller and my ramp fire to save me as much HP as I can these first 4 rounds. If I was to place these other alluvials down and try to get through the front line 
they end up just getting one shot by their Scions. So let's get Mystic down and I may as well get Toxic. I still need to get through the front line and Toxic Riplands is going to be the best way to do that. Generally, unless he misplaced, so if he places an Alluvial up here, something that isn't flush to the back line, I could have my Riplands here and he would actually target that instead of going to the catalogs. So if you are playing the Scion build, just be aware of that. And I may as well throw this down, I guess. This probably isn't even the best augment, but usually you'd want this Exalted Vitality on him. So when he gets to 50% HP, he gets a lot of energy regen. Which is basically doing the same thing as this, but he also gets HP regen with that Exalted Vitality what, bit, uh, Veil. The other thing you want to note, which I haven't been, is what alluvials are getting a parthing in the direction of the beam to the, the geyser. So I might want to note where my Rife Lance is parthing because it looked like he died pretty early and then maybe I can move him to not be in the line of fire. I definitely want to suppress their energy as much as I can. Got my survival protocols down. What I might do is just put this on the Griller. The Griller's really good because when he Omegas, putting mud down so that slows their attack. But when he Omegas, he leaves a statue that taunts everything. And that can interrupt their Omegas. And obviously soak a lot of damage as well. I could have put down uh, this energy redu reduction augment on him as well. Which may may have actually been better. I definitely could have put Toxic down, but I'm trying not to... I'm trying to show you more of a standard way this game plays out. Just move my Ranger to this side because just in case he was dying a bit early on this side. Because the Alfie Beam can definitely do that. They're, when you're playing Ramfire Inferno, a lot of the power actually can come from your Ranger. So definitely don't underestimate the Ranger with Inferno Phantom. It is a little bit of a priority to get the Gauntlet down. We're just going to buff up my Ripe Lance as best I can and hope he survives. Give everyone a bit more HP and I'll do that again. This did actually, having my Ranger here did actually cause the Alfie to shoot across the board here. And he's, yeah, so quite often they swap to the ramp fire this late. Which is fine, I think I still win. And he's got the weapons on the ranger. But, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, they, generally when they switch like this it means my front line is a lot stronger. And we usually win. I hope you learned something from that. If you wanted to play the Tsunami build that I versed in the first two games, I have a video on that. It's linked right here, so you can click on that and see if you prefer to play the Tsunami Enchanter build.